What's up, y'all? This is Brave, and I'm back for another review of Ready to Love. Of course, this is the Dallas season, season 8, episode 9, and the episode is titled Blink If You Need Help. Really, this episode should be called Blink If You Need a Connection. Because, baby, it's so many people that can go home right now. But let's just rock out with the show. So, I'm not going to touch on every little conversation that happened. Just the things that stuck out to me. Number one. Now, Kat is in the car with a couple of the other ladies, right? And they're talking about connections. Why is she talking about some, oh, you know, I'm trying to see what's up with Chris. I said, what? When when were you thinking about Chris? Because when you first came on the show, y'all went on one date and you never looked at that man again. So why are we trying to talk to him now? And of course, she's also trying to get to know Quentin. Ma'am, you're grasping at straws. It's too late in the game. You can just leave. It's fine. You'll be okay. Next person who I want to talk about is Chris. Y'all, when did he magically become a hot commodity? Like, how is it that you lost Jessica as a connection, but now you done picked up two other women? Since when? We already know that he had a connection with Aries. Now he's like, well, I'm trying to figure out which woman is going to be my lady out of the three. I said, three? You got to be kidding me. He done added on Lee and Kat. When have y'all had conversations? We have never seen him even look Lee's way. Like, at this point, Dallas is a joke. So everybody gets to the house or whatever. It looks nice. And everybody's trying to find their rooms, all this stuff. Now, one thing that stood out to me was that we saw Marie having a conversation with somebody on the balcony. Who was it? Cat. I said, what the heck is going on, Cat? Like, girl, you are literally going pillar to post trying to make some man interested in you so that way you can stay on this show. Please stop doing this. You're a pretty girl. You don't have to do this. I promise. Because now, Marie's like, yeah, you know, we can have conversations and we can hang out, all this stuff. And I'm just kind of like, sir, you could just choose Sierra and then we can move on. Because your religious beliefs and Jessica's, that ain't going to work. And if Kat is anything like Jessica, which, no, 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 I forgot. She is the one who says that she's not into church and she's not into organized religion, I think. So I don't know, maybe Kat and Maurier can be a thing, but I just feel like we're on episode nine or what is it? Eight, nine. I think episode nine. We're nine episodes in. We shouldn't be trying to blossom a connection at this point. But enough on Kat, because we're going to circle back to her. Um, Tommy ends up showing up, letting them know that, well, there is six women and there's only four guys. So we're going to send one of the women home. Why can't we send two? Because y'all sent two guys home a couple of episodes ago and you did not send two women home. How is that equal? Make it make sense. Nonetheless, Kat comes back around, y'all, and now she's in Quentin's face. I'm like, girl, this is a lot of you. Anybody else got something going on in the house? She's trying to make a connection with this man. He out here flipping chicken over. He ain't looked up from the chicken because he ain't interested in her. I'm just like, cat, baby girl, you literally could have skipped this trip and been like, listen, I don't have any connections that are solid enough for me. So at this point, I'm going to bow out gracefully and we would have respected it. We really would have. But this right here, chasing down every man, trying to get a connection to happen overnight. I don't think that's going to happen, baby girl. So next thing you know, Janelle comes outside because her man is outside. OK, so she comes to check in on him and Kat is like, oh, pull up a chair. You know, I don't mind sharing. And Janelle's response is, mm, well, you're not. <laughs> I had to giggle. I really did. Because clearly Janelle and Quentin must have already had a conversation that going into this little trip, they have chosen each other. It is very, very clear, especially considering he practically dropped Lee because he felt like she wasn't as confident and forthcoming as he wanted her to be. And yeah, I think they chose each other already. So then at this point, Kat ends up asking Quentin, like, oh, are you spoken for? 
And he says, yeah. I said, well, girl, that ends the conversation right there. So her response was, oh, does everybody else know that? I'm like, who the hell else is interested in Quentin besides you at this point and Janelle? Because we are not about to count Lee. We're not. And Janelle's response was, it all matter. Because he already know what it is. And I'm just like, well, cat, at this point, just take your L and walk away. Let them rock out together and move on. And honestly, y'all, I can't even be mad that at this point, Janelle and Quentin want to move forward together. Because again, we're at episode nine. We have met friends. We have now met exes. The next people that we're going to meet is family. Why would I try to bring somebody else on as this new connection? No, let's just go ahead, choose who we need to choose and move forward. That's the problem with Ready to Love. For some reason, we be all in these later stages of episodes and everybody's still trying to make connections. No, if you ain't got one, go home. All right, so we actually do see Quentin and Janelle have a conversation. And we learn that he cannot swim. Now, he does say that, you know, she can teach him how to float. But unfortunately, he does not know how to swim. And I just want him to take some adult swim lessons. Everybody needs to learn how to swim. There should be no judgment if you are an adult taking classes. Like, do it, please. And they further talk about their relationship. And according to him, he is ready to spend more time with her. He feels like this is going to solidify, you know, their relationship and where they are. And he seems to be ready for the process to be over. So that way they can date in real life and not have to do the foolishness of the show. And I'm like, okay, he must really be down for Janelle. And according to her, she feels the same way. But she just basically has to process everything because the actual process of the show is moving very fast. Keep in mind, she also just lost a connection with Herbert. And of course, she probably had feelings invested in him. So I get it. Sort your feelings out, girl. Let's move on. Now, y'all, we next see Chris and Lee, right? They're having this conversation and they're basically trying to see where this can go. But according to Lee, she talks to Chris the most on the phone. So now I'm kind of wondering, like... Is it that the show didn't set y'all up on no dates or what? Because again, we're in episode nine. Where did this connection come from? Because we ain't seen it at all. At all. Okay. So they talk about like, you know, their dream trip or whatever. And basically it was if, you know, they were to go on a trip, Basically, don't bring anything with them and buy everything when they get to their destination. I'm like, all right, cool. She seems like, you know, she's actually interested in Chris because I feel like she was more flirty and vocal with him than she has been on other dates with other people. So I don't know, y'all. Now, let's slide on over to Mr. Mario. So he goes to sit down and he sits right next to Jessica now, Sierra is sitting across from there and she tells him, why don't you come sit right here with me? And he literally gets up to go sit with Sierra. And I'm just kind of like, sir, you're going to have to learn how to balance. If you try to date both of these women in this house, you got to balance. You could have at least been like, oh, well, let me just chop it up with Jessica. I'll be with you in a moment or something. Now, keep in mind, there's other people at this table. And Sierra starts talking about her connections, or should I say her connection, because now she only has Marie as a connection. And she feels like, you know, he kind of dropping the ball. She's used to feeling pressure. She used to, you know, if a guy wants her, he's on her. And she basically wants that from Marie. But here's the thing, baby girl. Marie is over here spreading himself too thin because he got you. He got Jessica, and now some type of way he done picked up Kat along the way. So you can definitely sense that she's feeling a little way. So Marie pulls her to the side so that way they can chop it up. So basically, Sierra goes on to talk about how she doesn't feel like he pursues her in the way that she wants him to pursue her. Now, according to Marie, you know, everybody is different, all this stuff. However, she's like, no, but that's the basics, like... If, you know, if you really want to be with me, give me flowers, take me out. You know what I'm saying? So I get what she's saying. 
Because let's be honest, even though these people are on this dating show, a lot of times the guys are doing the bare minimum. They're not bringing flowers. They're not bringing little gifts. They're not, you know, saying like, oh, I remember that you said this. So we're going to do this activity. Like there's not really any effort being put in by the guys. So I get it. Also, the fact that you are now spreading your time with multiple women when y'all need to be dwindling down like I get why she feels the way that she does however I also feel like this is a new connection like y'all ain't been talking that long so clearly he must not know how to approach you and you know treat you how you want to be treated Now, I can honestly respect her for saying, listen, if you want to pursue your other connections and this ain't working for you, I can go ahead and go home. And I'm like, yes, finally, someone who is willing to go home and is okay with it. All right. So then we move on from there and it's time for everybody to eat. Keep in mind, the guys have been grilling or at least we saw Quentin grilling. I think we saw Marie on the grill a little bit. So it's time for everybody to eat. And Jessica, she ends up fixing um, Marie's plate. Now, it looks like she was fixing a plate uh, as well as Janelle. Now, according to Jessica, she's like, you know, I'm basically trying to have some type of PDA, a connection with Marie. So I'm going to make the gesture of fixing his plate as well as taking it. And asking him if he wants dessert. I said, well, look at you looking like the perfect little woman. I wonder if you would have put in that same effort for Chris. Because that's the type of woman that he wanted. All right, now let's slide on over to Sierra. Because she feels some type of way. Because she's noticing what's going on with Jessica and Marie. And she feeling away. She's like talking to Quentin and Janelle. And I'm hella confused. Because I'm like, why are y'all sitting way over here? When they got that big old table over there. Like, what is this? Were y'all trying to be coupled off and then Sierra happened to sit by y'all? What's going on here? But nonetheless, she's like, listen, my bags are still packed. Basically, she ready to go. She checked out. And I'm like, all right, cool. You can go ahead and head on out, girl. And matter of fact, you can take Kat with you. All right, so now they all decide to play a game, right? And I will say that Sierra's personality was definitely showing through, especially now that she don't care. She checked out. Like, now she's just there to have a good time and kick it and wait till they send her home. And I'm like, all right, if that's what you want to do, that's cool too. Because honestly, she was hilarious. Talking about her hooking up with women, but she can't bring it home, you know, because her mama ain't going to rock with that, as well as, you know, her not being able to put them on child support. <laughs> um, what was the other one that she talked about? It was something else. I think it was like body count. And she was like, guys, think about your body count first or something. Yeah, she's funny. But then she posed some question to Marie, and I can't exactly remember what the question was, but all I know is that his answer was that he has never been in love before, and he doesn't even know what that feels like, but he's ready and open for it. Um, I'm just so shocked, because it seemed like he was definitely in tune with that ex that he had. Um, And also, she realized that, you know, basically she's been kind of hard on him because... Clearly, he don't even know how to show love, and that's what she's expecting from him. Now, y'all, here come a question about gender roles. Do you believe in them or not? Now, you have, um, what's her name? Janelle. She's like, you know, I don't have a problem with traditional um, gender roles. According to Marie and somebody else chiming in, you know, that was never a problem in the black community. That was a white person thing. I said, all right, pro-black people. Okay. (laughs) I didn't think that's where we were going to go with it. I thought this was all individualized, but okay. So here comes Chris, y'all. And basically, he ain't feeling what's going on, you know, in society today. AKA women in power. Not empowering, no. In power. I-N-P-O-W-E-R. In power. He does not like the idea of women being bosses clearly because according to him women are too emotional for a leadership role sir are you on drugs because men are so much more emotional than women please cut it out like i 
I was just so, so turned off by this man. So you have Sierra, like, he tripping. Of course, the number one person that's going you know, stand up against what he got to say is Jessica because number one, she's a boss on her own. And of course she doesn't agree with him. Hell, I don't agree with him. And in his confessional, he's like, Jessica, she just wants to argue. No, she's correcting you because according to you, a woman should probably just be barefoot and pregnant and never leave the house. But according to him, he's going to run his household however he wants to. And honestly, I'm just like, I hope that his daughter's mother is very, you know, hands on with her child and lets her know that her daddy's views are not what the rest of the world thinks. Because you can be more than just a woman who stays home. Because, sir, you're raising a daughter. What is your expectation for her? Nonetheless, let's move on from him. Um... Janelle chimes in and she basically goes on about how women are supposed to be a helpmate and basically, you know, if I'm here to help, then I should be able to carry the same load that her man does. Oh, that was a problem. Sierra talking about she don't want to carry no load. Cat don't want to carry no load. <laughs> and then Janelle hit her with a, oh girl, we know. I said, oh, messy. <laughs> Wait a second. How did we get here? So Kat goes on to explain that, you know, she's done the whole um, alpha thing. She's living in her femininity right now or whatever. And Janelle, of course, has a rebuttal. And she's like, how did we get to the point of women and handling business, you know, doing all of this? Now that's seen as masculine. So Kat's response to that was, that's not even what I was saying, but okay. Here's the thing. What were you saying? Because you're the one who threw out the term femininity. What's the opposite of feminine? Masculine. So I think that's how we got here. <laughs> but nonetheless, the girls are going back and forth now. It's getting a little heated. Like it got to the point where Kat basically told Janelle that, you know, her attitude makes her ugly and all this stuff. I'm just like, listen, it's really not that deep. Y'all two don't even have to like each other. This conversation really don't have to be that deep. Like, y'all can relax. But I feel like this undertone of Janelle feels away because, Kat, you're trying to come in on her and Quentin. And you're coming in hella last minute. And, Kat, you feel like Quentin is fair game because this ain't the end of the process. Like, it got to the point where... Kat is saying that she's sick and tired of Janelle and her antics and how she's a rude girl. She calls her a B word and everything. I say, okay, this is going too far. Like, unless there have been some other things that have occurred on this show, like we haven't even seen interactions between these women. So all of this energy, don't tell me this is because of Quentin and y'all low key using this argument as a way to fight over him because if i think about this entire conversation and what they had to say um i feel like if janelle posed the question hey how do we get to the point of that being masculine instead of your response being that's not what i even meant but whatever and rolling your eyes because you already got an attitude that janelle is speaking you could have just said hey that's not exactly what i meant what i mean is for me blah 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 but no you came in with the same energy that janelle did y'all both don't like each other and y'all both had attitudes because of what occurred earlier in the day so let's call a thing a thing here both of y'all were talking reckless both of y'all were out of line especially with like the negative things that y'all said about each other and it was too much considering this was just some little questions on a card so when it comes to Kat, she goes into the kitchen because she hot and Maria goes to like console her and check in on her. And of course, in his confessional, because he's Mr. Woke pro black man, he's like, I hate to see, you know, two of my connections arguing and fighting. I said, you don't even have these women as your connections. Janelle has moved on. That's not your connection. Please stop. So now we have this conversation between Sierra and Maria. Basically, she has realized that this man don't know what love is, so she can't expect that from him. And, you know, he's telling her that, hey, the reason why I asked you 
how should I, you know, show you love? I don't want to get the response of you should already know when I don't know. I don't know what that is. I don't know how to do that. None of that. Um, Here's the thing. I feel like this is a good conversation for them to have. Absolutely. However, I feel like my issue with this is that he treats certain women differently. Like, he still treats Sierra like the homegirl. However, when he's with Jessica, he acts a little bit different. So, I'm just like, I think she wants the same effort that you give Jessica. But I'm going to let you rock with what you said because this is what you said. You said you ain't never had love or nothing. So, we're going to rock with what you're saying. Um, but I do kind of feel like these two are not a match. <laughs> and we need to move away from this. Like, I just don't think that they're a match. And Sierra, you can move on and, you know, date somebody in real life, not on this show. Now, we move on to Maria and Jessica. And maybe this whole conversation that they had was a bust because baby girl was ready to go to bed. She was doing a few stretches and she was ready to knock out. However, Maria, I don't know if he was expecting for them to have like conversations, do something romantic. I don't know, but baby girl was not interested. I mean, honestly, I don't think she's interested in Marie. But again, everybody's still trying to stay on the show. So let's slide on over to Aries and Phil. First of all, every time that we have seen them, they have been next to each other. We've seen them play games. We've seen them hugged up. He comes to her room. He gives her a foot rub. I'm just like, okay, let them go ahead right off into the sunset. Because it seems like... These two are going to make it to the end because I do not see her with Chris. I just can't see it. Now, y'all, I do have to point out the fact that Phil is out here rubbing feet. Last time I checked, they said that that man didn't have, you know, physical touch as a thing for him. Well, baby, he sure is touching and rubbing on those feet. So clearly him and Aries must have a real deep connection. Now, y'all, we get to the next day, right? Everybody's having breakfast or whatever. And we see Kat and Chris. They go to have a conversation. Y'all, what does Chris have on? Like, I don't know if he slept in that or what, but his outfit was really bothering me. But you know what? Let's just get into the conversation that they had. So they talk about how his family does something called the Hunger Games. Uh, yeah, I don't know where that conversation was going. But nonetheless, they talk about how, you know, how his culture is very different than how we do things here in the U.S. For example, he don't really believe in life insurance because for him, when his mom died, the community paid for her funeral. They paid for them to fly back to Africa. So that way she could be buried next to her husband, which was his dad. And I'm just like, well, shout out to your community. Because, baby, let me tell you something. <laughs> Funeral prices, at least in California, sky high. Okay? Sky high. So for them to pay for your family to fly back to Africa, pay to ship that body back to Africa. Baby, shout out to your community. Because they got money. Okay? They spend a hefty price to send a body internationally. So at this point, these two, they are connecting because she has the same background as him. Well, not exactly, but, you know, she is of African descent as well as him. And she likes the things that he's talking about, you know, him being a provider and all of this stuff. And I'm just like, so why didn't y'all try to pursue each other why y'all been on this show y'all literally went on one date and then nothing happened like i'm just so confused with this season of ready to love it's not making any sense because these two now they're clicking but again we're on episode nine like what is happening because when they get back home don't they have to meet the families y'all just now making a connection and now you gonna introduce somebody to your mama or your sister that's weird. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to Lee because baby girl decided that she was going to set up a little step class for everybody. And I was like, okay, that's different. I haven't seen anybody do that on the show. And some people could keep up and some people could not. 
baby Mario was doing his best you know what I'm saying he was doing his best and then there were times where the camera would pan to Sierra she was just standing around of course Janelle she didn't want any parts of this no offense but I feel like Janelle don't work out so that may be the reason why she didn't want to participate but baby, next thing I know, she was sitting in the back. I said, where did, where you get a chair from, girl? I don't see no other chairs along the back wall. But you in one. Okay. <laughs> so, nonetheless, you know, Quentin, he's actually, you know, checking Lee out now because he's seeing her in her element. I'm like, oh, now it's intriguing because you can see that she's very athletic, even though she already told you this. And she can probably keep up with you in the gym. Janelle ain't about to work out with you, buddy. So, I see what you're trying to do here, but uh-uh. Stay over there with Janelle. Leave Lee alone. Because you already ghosted her once. You ain't got to do it twice. Now, y'all, Tommy is back. And it's time to send one of these ladies home. The guys talk about who they feeling, who they ain't feeling. Listen, we have Sierra up for elimination and Jessica. And of course, they left it on a cliffhanger. We don't know who went home. Hopefully, it's both ladies because they both can do better than the men that are on this show. So y'all, go ahead and let me know what y'all thought about this episode. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe to my channel. And I will talk to y'all in my next review. Bye, guys.